Attention, this information pertains only to CSEMS, cardiac, and trauma drug boxes stocked at Augusta Health. Any changes to this information will be announced. This information as well as all drug box information can be found at csems.org. Under the Agencies tab, select Drug Boxes. The following information is intended for providers in the CSEMS region that transport patients to Augusta Health and who retrieve their drug boxes at Augusta Health. The Augusta Health Pharmacy has stocked CSEMS regional drug boxes, both cardiac and trauma, with a new nebulizer system. The Salter Nebutech HDN disposable nebulizer. The following information is intended to train providers to be prepared to utilize the new device and will also provide you product information for additional information from the manufacturer and from Augusta Health Pharmacy. You can click on the information bar below the video for the following attachments. The Augusta Health Instructional Information, which is also available on the CSEMS website under Recent News and the Drug Box webpage. The device is called the Salter Nebutech HDN Disposable Nebulizer with the reference number 8960-7-50. Other manufacturer reference materials include the Operator's Guide, the product brochure, and the Manufacturer Product Video, which is a YouTube link that you can click below. Note that the manufacturer's product video also contains information for the reusable home care version. Let's take a look at what we'll find inside the packaging for the new nebulizer. The new nebulizer will be located in the same place it's normally stocked within the drug box. You'll find the following components within the packaging. The device insert, and the equipment includes the mouthpiece, the nebulizing chamber, and the mask adapter. There will also be seven feet of supply tubing and notice that there is no blue hard plastic connector for the supply chamber. To reiterate, the supply tubing is standard oxygen tubing. It does not have a particular end that needs to connect to the nebulizing chamber. Both ends are the flexible plastic. There is no blue hard plastic connector. Let's take a look at the universal mask adapter and its various utilities. Some general information for the mask adapter. The wide end will always be attaching to the nebulization chamber either at the top of the device or at the mouthpiece port and the narrow end of the device will always be attaching either to the non-rebreather mask or to a CPAP device or other equipment if available. Uh, so a couple of notes uh, you'll need this to augment the device with the non-rebreather mask and CPAP or if you were to be ventilating a nebulizer treatment into a patient uh, this would be necessary to connect to some corrugated tubing and the 15-22 millimeter multi-adapter. Uh, notice that this device, this new system, does not contain any corrugated tubing. Uh, standard nebulizer administration will not require any accessory corrugated tubing. Let's take a detailed look at the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece 
has built upon it the exhalation chamber, which consists of a green one-way valve, flexible rubber, and a locking cap, uh, which can be removed. And if this were to come apart, you would replace the device and screw down the locking cap, and it will be firmly secured. Let's take a detailed look at the nebulization chamber. The nebulization chamber consists of the actual nebulizing chamber itself, which contains a green cone, where if this were to fall out during medication insertion, uh, it needs to be properly seated down into the bottom of the chamber. It may require a little bit of turning, uh, but it should seat firmly at the bottom. The oxygen connector is at the bottom of the, of the nebulizing chamber, where the supply tubing can be attached, either end of the supply tubing. The rest of the device, uh, at the top of the device, is the inhalation port, uh, which can be removed and will need to be moved around for various configurations. It contains a small green rubber one-way valve on the bottom of the device. The inhalation chamber can be moved from the top of the device to the mouthpiece port uh, in order to use the mask adapter uh, in order to attach this to a mask for patients that would require that. The inhalation chamber can be moved back and forth from the top of the device to the mouthpiece port. The standard assembly uh, for handheld use, you'll have the inhalation chamber plugged into the top and you'll attach the mouthpiece to the mouthpiece port. When you need to administer the nebulizer via mask, there are two cons configurations to consider. Uh, one is for a patient who is sitting upright. The mask adapter will be plugged into the top and the inhalation port will be moved to the mouthpiece. And as normal, a non-rebreather can have the reservoir removed and you can insert the nebulizing chamber assembly into the non-rebreather mask. Now inhalation will be pulled in from the side of the device through the inhalation port that's now attached to the mouthpiece port and this would be for the upright seated patient. We will next take a look at uh, the other configurations to consider. Let's explore the three configurations that may be needed during medication administration uh, under standard situations. You'll need the components shown above. Using a sample medication, uh, the medication will be injected into the nebulizing chamber itself on top of the green cone. <clears throat> Make sure that the medication goes uh, near the side and not directly down into the small hole at the top of the cone. Screw the nebulizing chamber assembly back onto it and for handheld administration you'll connect the mouthpiece to the mouthpiece port on the side of the device Connect one end of the supply tubing to oxygen 
and the manufacturer recommends an 8 liter per minute flow rate. That's 8 liter per minute flow rate. The other end of the supply tubing goes to the oxygen port at the bottom of the nebulizing chamber and so we have nebulization happening. If the patient requires uh, mask administration and they happen to be seated upright, you'll need to remove the inhalation port from the top of the device and then resecure it into the side port, the mouthpiece port. You'll need to attach the mask adapter to the top of the device, the wide end into the device. The skinny end will go into the mask, as was shown. If the patient were to be in a supine position, put the inhalation port at the top of the device and put the mask adapter onto the mouthpiece port and then you can attach the mask to the adapter by way of the mouthpiece port. The You can twist the device into different positions but this picture right here shows the patient would be supine and the device, the nebulizing chamber, remains upright. If you were to connect to CPAP you would need the adapter at the top and you can insert it into your CPAP device. Thank you for your attention. Uh, please contact the Central Shenandoah EMS Council with any questions.